Welcome to the NEOS Conference 2021 in a supercharged online edition live here from Dresden. And we're not only broadcasting live, we also have live music this time, composed and performed by Jan Kurfürst. So, how was live performance last year with your band? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. So you're looking forward to next season then. Right, a, wow. so, and <laughs> we have you here to lift up the spirits a bit, and it's so great to have you here. Also great to have you here, Tobias Gruber from Sandstorm. Thank you very much, Robert, from Flow Native, my beautiful co-host this year. <laughs> I had to switch hosts because, sadly, Maya couldn't be here. So, Maya, we send you all the best of greetings, and hopefully next year is another chance. This NeosCon is special again. Robert, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, um, I mean, first of all, uh, we are obviously not the professional moderators, as you can see. Um, but also, uh, we have an online edition, which means you can participate online a lot. And if you talk about, if you post about uh, NEOS Conference, then please use the hashtag NEOSCon. Um, push everything to your social media, create the buzz it deserves, and uh, show photos and everything. And do that on Twitter and on Instagram, of course. Those are our two main channels. Right. So this year's NEOS conference, as you are already aware, is an online event again, because as you all know, we're still in a pandemic. Uh, so this year, again, we thought about how we can make this year's NEOS conference special and focusing on the health and safety of everybody involved at the same time. So what we did um, is uh, diverging from the original plan we had of having some people here as an audience, uh, we had to reduce that down to the bare minimum again of people. So we have very little people here uh, who help us uh, manage all the technical aspects. Um, we're getting tested every day. We all had a PCR test to make sure all of the people here in the studio uh, have negative test results and everybody behind the cameras is wearing masks. Robert and I are the only exceptions in front yeah. of the camera. We are allowed to speak to you without a mask, uh, which we is very comfortable. We even practice to, to speak without breathing, right? So <laughs> <it's> <laughs> we made a special training for that. But nevertheless, uh, even though you can't be here with us in person this year again, uh, this is a community event. Uh, this is about the NEOS community. So please, 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 as Robert mentioned, make sure to get involved. Uh, tweet or post to Instagram about how you're watching uh, the stream. And we'll come back to that again a little later, which opportunities you have to get in touch. Now, NEOS Conference is all about the great talks that we have. Uh, a team of people worked tirelessly for, I don't know, weeks and months uh, to prepare an awesome lineup of speakers 
from the community and also from outside our NEOS community to make sure that NEOS conference is an inspiring event as we try to make it every year to get diversity into this event to you know get input from different perspectives and for me the in, during the last years that always was a, a great asset of NEOS conference that it's not just about NEOS and, and the many different components that NEOS has, but also, you know, talking about accessibility, talking about social responsibility, talking about open source, um, that, that was so awesome. So um, if you're interested and, and want to see and want to learn a little bit of the backgrounds of the people, uh, have a look uh, on our website, neoscon.io, and there's a lot of details about the speakers and their talks. And like last year, where we had a big blue button room set up, so you can have a live chat during the talks, ask questions, uh, chat with us, with the team behind the cameras. Um, we have that as well. Go to www.neoscon.io slash live. And the www is important to, so that you get redirected to the, to the right point. Um, if you forget that, you will end up on the start page but that's fine you will find the link as well so slash live takes you to the big blue button room so join us there for uh the live chat uh speak to the core team ask them questions um and use this opportunity to you know get in touch make this the live event that it is we're we're streaming live we're talking with you we want to get in touch and of course uh if you want to take a look at uh, when which talk would you miss if you fetch your um, your kids from the kindergarten and maybe organize some spontaneous uh, kids fetching from the kindergarten so you don't miss the talk? Um, then you can have a look at the schedule, which is also available on neoscon.io, and uh, you'll find the link there. And also. Um, yeah, you find uh, descriptions of all the talks which are planned for today and for tomorrow. Click. I did. Right. So, and like we did in the last pe uh, years, uh, we also have um, the great NEOS Award um, presented tonight. And um, there's already, we have a big thank you for everyone who contributed and sent in uh, submissions uh, for the NEOS Awards. We know that there are lots of big um, and nice projects out there and um, it's, uh, we are really curious about uh, who will actually will be the lucky winner tonight uh, of this year's awards. NEOS, the NEOS Award for me is always one of the big highlights of NEOS conference. You know, the, the end of the first day yeah. and this year, um, if I remember correctly, on the website, uh, all the entrants are, are entered already, right? You can see the projects um, that, that were submitted. So have a look there. And you, know, you can see the awesome quality of, of NEOS and, and Flow projects and the packages that, that people submitted. Um, this is a big, big thank you to everyone who's, who's brave enough to you know, show their work. Um, this is... Th th that's something I'm really always looking forward to, the NEOS Award, to showcase just the awesome web projects uh, people do with, with NEOS and Flow. Um, Robert. Yeah, and we'll do, do our best, of course, to, to uh, have that spread that little glamour for this event. So uh, since we cannot do that live on stage uh, with you folks out there, we try to give it that special experience at and least, right? And who, uh, who is presenting the NEOS Awards this year? Yeah, is that a secret still? No. I'm not sure, but I think that was a special... We have a special treat for you again yes, this year. It right. will be it will be awesome. Make sure to check in for the NEOS Awards. Now, a conference like this, even though it's a remote and online conference, uh, it takes quite a lot of effort to make this happen. So we want to take a moment to say thank you to the sponsors who helped make NEOS conference possible again this year. And this year, uh, so many people wanted to help us make this possible that we 
that I have two slides to show. <laughs> <laughs> so, so first of all, a huge thank you to our gold sponsors, Flownative, Punkt.de, Queo, and Cornelsen. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for helping us make this NeosCon Online 2021 possible. Uh, thank you very much, you rock. In addition to the gold sponsors, uh, this year we have a couple of silver and bronze sponsors. Silver sponsors are Gesagt Getan again, thank you very much, Jung von Martech, Internetso, Münz Media, and Tech Division. Thank you so much for supporting this year's NEOS conference. And our bronze spo sponsors are DMK, eBusiness, and Unica. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now, in addition to supporting the NEOS conference, there's also the support that we get for the NEOS project on an ongoing basis. That is, the financial support you give to this open source project uh, that enables us to give out releases regularly. That helps us do the administrative work, and Robert, you can probably tell a <laughs> big story about that, um, which we do behind the scenes to ensure that our beautiful NEOS brand stays up, I guess. Uh, you, you, you Sometimes I, I've got the impression now that we are like the senior people uh, <laughs> in the community, right? That we take up these, these boring and uh, <laughs> hassle jobs, spending lots of hours into legal issues and financial issues. And, right, and for me, yeah. that's, a, that's, a, that's a really good thing because, uh, you know, for us too, for example, we try to ensure that the community isn't disturbed by these things as much as possible, that that is handled within the team. And as I wanted to say, what enables us to do this is the ongoing support uh, from our longtime supporters. So when you, um, like in the last years, we still have the website neosfunding.sandstorm.de online currently where you can see all the different support options that we currently have so for organizations there's different levels of support starting from the bronze level um silver gold platinum i want to you know encourage people to to look at those two levels platinum and diamond that that would really be awesome if you, we can get a supporter uh like this uh this year and uh last year during uh, neos conference we we also added individual uh, supporter badges so um as we're currently like right in the middle of the process of moving the uh, the funding platform do send an email to foundation at neos.io uh if if you would like to become a supporter um we're we're trying to make sure that uh less money goes to paying services that we use and ends up more with the with the project so i have a little treat how how about i mean that's spontaneous but how about if someone decides to become gold supporter during this conference we'll give them a special shout out here so like sponsorship uh we we that would be will awesome. mention that definitely yeah so that would be awesome yeah let's so go ahead maybe uh you find some some bucks somewhere uh from last year's project and become a gold supporter and to show you uh among which awesome company of 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 uh <laughs> companies <laughs> <laughs> among the company of companies you would be uh Please pull up the, the slide. We have a big list of gold supporters right now, and I'm going to read them out because it's so awesome. They enable us to roll out the releases to support some development projects. It's 3M5, Sideguys, Flow Native, NetLogix, Visol, Jung von Matt, Internetso, Inwebs, DIU, die Unternehmer, Punkt.de, Kaufmann Digital, Sandstorm, Pass Creator, Network Team. Thank you so much uh, for the your gold support status. We have silver supporters, Elementare Teilchen, Format D, DMK eBusiness, Vivo Media, and our bronze supporters, Web Access, Unica, and Mindscreens. Thank you so much. Do consider, as Robert said, uh, joining this awesome list of sponsors. And if you do so during NEOS conference, you will get a special shout out. Now, NEOS, of course, is also about style. It's about, you know, thinking how what we do will be perceived. 
for me, the starting point of that journey was really the, the rebranding we did. Was it Neos Conference 2015, 16, 16 probably? In Kolba Moor. It, it was right. a few years ago already. Now, for this year's Neos Conference, the team came up with a, with a new idea. It is an online event, but nevertheless, the, this feeling that we have during an um, on-site event, in, in, when we do the NEOS conference, hopefully again next year in person, um, you get a conference t-shirt if you want one. And you know that shows, hey, I, I was there, that, that's a special event. So this year, the team, and I will hold this up into the camera here, um, they did design a conference shirt this way. Um, so this is available for purchase. Um, so you can decide if you want one and if yes, which size you want. Um, the design, I will pull this up here. Um, I think they did a really good job again. Do you like it? Yeah, definitely. This is so awesome. Um, the pixel art. Uh, <laughs> which mountain is it actually? Mount Neos, so of course. Yeah. Mount, <laughs> Mount Neos. <Yeah. laughs> okay, so if you would like to buy uh, one of those awesome shirts and support the project, uh, go to www.neoscon.io slash shop. Again, with the www to go directly there. And in addition to the, uh, to the shirts in the shop, you can also find FFP2 masks uh, with a Neos logo to show your support for the project. And again, um, the proceedings from these sales do support the project. So uh, thank you very much to everyone uh, who goes to the shop and, and buys one of those nice items. One more thing where you can participate in this year's event. The team also set up a quiz um, that you can fill out online. Um, and if you participate in the quiz, you have the chance to win a NEOS merchandise uh, bag and that will be sent to you. So every day of NEOS conference, today and tomorrow, each day there is a quiz. Today it's more general questions about NEOS. Tomorrow it's more technically oriented. Um, go to www, um, I will mumble the Ws by the end of the day, .neoscon.io slash quiz uh, to find, I think it was around 20 questions or so. It was quite quite a lot. And there's a time limit to you filling out the quiz. So you, you know, don't have too much time Googling the answers. So I think it's 15 minutes. Um, so one round today, the second one tomorrow. Um, join the quiz for a great chance to win some prizes. Right, we forgot one thing about the sponsors, of course, but uh, this is not just some, some random sponsorship you put up, but it's a lot of passion and technical knowledge. So uh, if, if you looked around or if you've already seen some, some pictures uh, before uh, this event we posted, um, you've seen that uh, the, s the team at Sandstorm really went crazy this time with the studio. Uh, this, is, this is so amazing to see what they put up here. It's so professional. And if you compare it uh, with last year, for example, this, this was, I mean, already an amazing setup. But uh, with the plans for this year, it just didn't fit into <laughs> your office. So you, we had to move up here to, to this big conference hall. Which is like 10 times or more. <laughs> <laughs> the, the space that we had last year and that's yeah. yeah so huge thank you to sandstorm and everyone involved behind the scenes uh to to put this up this is just uh, beyond everything anything i've i've seen uh, online <laughs> throughout the last year at any conference so that's pretty cool and as we already mentioned this is not about Robert and me talking to you. This is a community event. We want to be in discussions with you. We want to speak directly with you. We want to see how you watch NEOS conference. So like last year, and that, that was like the, the best part about it for me really, uh, do tweet how you're watching NeosCon this year. I pulled up some of the pictures from last year and there were people sitting outside in the sun. I think Dimitri was at his dacha in, in, in Russia <laughs> in the sun and he, he had one of the best connections and it was really awesome when we had his uh, interview after the, after the talk. <laughs> there was someone doing laundry. There was a kid <laughs> watching the stream. That was so, so cool. So please, please, please tweet your pictures uh, or send them on Instagram with the hashtag NeosCon um, and we will pull 
pull those up at the end of the day and you know show show everybody how how cool that is uh that we're together here for these two days now i think that's the end of the conference already <laughs> no i think we we're getting started here okay after the introduction, we'll have the first talk of the day. And the first talk that we will do, of course, is the opening keynote, like in the last years we're already used to. We get a special treat as our first talk. And the opening keynote this year will be held by Robert Lemke again. As we already mentioned, and there's magic happening behind the scenes right now, Robert works at Flow Native. He's one of the founders of the NEOS project, a long, long time NEOS core team member. And in his keynote today, he will give us a glimpse of the NEOS project in the past 12 months since the last uh, since the last keynote, really. Um, I'm always looking forward to those. Uh, Key keynotes that Robert holds um, because it's it's not just figures and, and, and dates and number of releases. Um, there's there's also some something special in there every time. So before we get started, there will be a short clip of sponsors, and then after that, it's Robert with the keynote. Enjoy. <laughs> I'm doing the keynote. So still, um, also, like I said last year, which uh, was uh, where the keynote happened from my office at home, still some kind of artificial experience <laughs> for me. Um, I, I'm really used to like, you know, interacting with the audience a bit and, and looking at your faces when I tell you something about the last year. Um, so that means I can only guess into the dark, into the camera here, and and wonder how the last year was for you. So, what did you do? Did you take a walk through the woods? Um, and th these are places uh, where I've been taking walks. Actually, lots of people moved to outside uh, through the pandemic, and and I mean because which alternatives did they have to meeting friends or uh, going to their climbing hall or anything like that. So it kind of was nice, I think, uh, rediscovering a few things like going for a walk. That's not what uh, young people usually do. But on the sa at the same point, it, it also felt quite uniform, quite samey you know uh you you get that rhythm of every day at a certain time you might take a break and s go around the block and go through the woods and so on and um i mean even though we are very privileged uh it sometimes feels a bit like a golden cage i guess so in the preparation uh for this keynote i i looked for what through my photos what what happened last year and ah uh, yeah and then i found these uh photos and clips from conferences uh, and and concerts i've been last year so that's something i i really miss a lot this this energy with all the people around like you know getting into the masses lots of people around you everyone's dancing um, I mean, that, that was the concert part, not the conference part, right? Um, but even meeting in real life with a NEOS team is so special. You remember when, when we sat in funny circles uh, at, at NEOS sprints and were discussing things, whatever, strategy, values, 
uh, new things we wanted to develop. We had these fish bowls and everything. And I know that lots of you who were involved um, missed these sprints a lot. And I certainly do. But that will come back, you know. These times will come back and we'll sit together and, and revive that energy. And uh, by the way, I also found a photo. Did you know that um, this sprint here was actually exactly at this place here? So Sebastian sitting there, that was up <laughs> around there. So this is uh, the, the same conference room here. Right, so what could you do? What, what did you do with your year in, in terms of NEOS? Um, I know that some companies had uh, big trouble uh, w w when they had customers, for example, working in the tourism sector or event sector. Then, of course, uh, they, they didn't have any projects to work on anymore. Um, and others really had lots of jobs to do because everyone was, was going online uh, trying to digi digitize their, their processes and, and need websites and solutions for that. And even though it's a, it's a bad situation, sometimes there's some, you know, like some, some inspiration in there or some opportunities to do something different than you did before. So, for example, beginning of this year, finally, I, I took some time off, literally like three weeks or so, or even four weeks almost, and learned something new. <laughs> Not so new for you guys, but for me. So I learned, really, really learned React. I really learned uh, GraphQL. I really learned Relay and uh, Tailwind CSS and, and stuff like that, and built a little application. Because uh, I always envied the the no I I didn't envy them I I you know looked up to the the folks at the sprints who were able to do something um, about the Neos UI they could implement new features completely there and I really wanted to uh, learn that as well and it was so inspiring to take that time out and you know without any planning or plan B. I just, I just did it. And of course it was possible because I had uh, enough projects before so I, I could do that financially. But still, sometimes it's so inspiring to just, just do something without much thinking. So um, as usual, let's take a look back at the past, uh, what happened in the NEOS universe and you could imagine that not a lot happened um, because well everyone was busy with thinking about uh, the pandemic how the, of the safety of their uh, families and so on and oops that was too too uh, fast actually click 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 there we go. Um, so I asked a lot of people in the community and lots of them said like um, yeah, there was not much going on, and at, at least in the weeklies, you know that the NEOS teams have their weekly gatherings in, in Slack. I also could read in the minutes of these meetings, uh, not much going on NEOS-wise, um, and busy with lots of other things. But if you look at what actually happened, that's a whole different story. So. Um, in August, for example, we had a little update of the brand presented by Sebastian. And that is just a little addition or, um, or specification of our brand, uh, which emphasizes our curiosity. So a lot in NEOS is about our curiosity to discover new things, to try out new things. And I'm, I'm really happy that they found this, you know, specific wording for it and implemented it also on, on our website. So if you look at the NEOS website, you find, uh, for example, in, in terms of the photos being used and the headlines set, uh, you see that this idea of curiosity is reflected there. Um, I'll get to back to the brand uh, topic uh, later on again. But also, as Tobias already mentioned, 
there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes about the NEOS Foundation. So if you haven't heard much about that work, that's a pretty good sign because that means it doesn't distract you from doing your NEOS work, right? So if you remember that, uh, we founded the NEOS Foundation in order to um, get work on all the legal and financial issues the NEOS project might have and provide a budget to the NEOS team. I mean, we can do that. We have a small budget, but still um, all the hassle, like the legal hassle, is taken away from the um, developers, designers, and so on. And we started that as a community interest company uh, in the UK because that legal form was so appealing to us. Unfortunately, it was so difficult in practice and then Brexit came, of course. So throughout the last year, we were still busy with moving the NEOS Foundation uh, to a new legal form, which is uh, the NEOS Foundation EV, so a German association. And so we finished doing that. We did all the tax work and and bank account stuff and, and so on. And you remember two years ago already, um, I mentioned in my keynote that Rick from the Type 3 Association uh, uh, said to us that they are willing to transfer all the existing NEOS and Flow trademarks to the NEOS Foundation. Now, Things like trademarks take some time and it's not so easy to do that. But finally, uh, all these uh, trademarks are actually um, transferred to the NEOS Foundation. And just about that trademark thing, there's a lot of ongoing work also behind the scenes. So, for example, there are trademarks which look similar to NEOS or uh, who try to sue us for uh, using our uh, logo even though we had it first and things like that you know and these are things we deal with behind the scenes uh, with a very nice lawyer from from berlin who helps us uh, winning these these uh, oppositions for example right because what's important to us is that the brand we created um that identity it has that we don't have to um, leave that. You know, it would be really bad for Flow, for example, uh, remaking all this Neos uh, light here be behind me. Imagine we have to give up our logo. Um, I said to him yesterday, it's not a problem if we need to change the color, actually. Ah. <laughs> that was not a planned cue. <laughs> anyway, so. Um, but, of course, we want to stick to our brand and we want to, to uh, still have it and so we need to defend it um, at, at some point, unfortunately. Right, so, but NEOS uh, is not about branding and marketing, it's about NEOS itself, of course, uh, the open source project uh, we maintain and create. So, there were 32 NEOS releases and 62 Flow releases last year. That's 94 releases in total. And that's quite something, I think, given the situation we had. So a huge thank you to the release managers, the teams involved, and the upmergers doing all the work uh, to also have these frequent patch level releases. I know it's a lot of work and I'm very thankful that you did that. So we had, I think after the conference, we had uh, started with NEOS 5.3, which was an LTS release. Um, and so there were lots of, I think there were lots of speed ups uh, for move actions, for example, in the content repository. Um, we had configurable asset constraints. So that means uh, we could define which asset source or which media type uh, could be used as when you are using a specific node type, for example. Um, and for the first time, we had the configurable PSR15 middleware kernel in, in Flow. What is the PSR15 middleware kernel, <laughs> uh, you might ask? So. All these PSRs are standards from the, P, uh, from the PHP community and we are moving to uh, 
uh, using these standards more and more. So this is the list of standards we already fulfill. And so we, we wanted to fully embrace PSR 15, the middleware standard, which means that we had to replace the HTTP component we had in Flow. And then we made a big um, jump version-wise. Um, we skipped NEO 6 and uh, then had NEO 7, so we have parity in terms of version numbers to make things easier. So you always know now NEO 7 is based on Flow 7, and there you go. So And there were lots of changes under the hood as well, but nevertheless very important changes. So for example, Atomic Fusion was added to the NEOS core, which means that we fully embrace um, this way of developing NEOS websites now. And uh, for example, the Kickstarter uses AFX now. Then we had other packages in included, like uh, the, uh, the Sideguy Silhouettes package, uh, which is now called Node Presets in NEOS. Uh, we had further work on the PSR15 uh, integration, um, and you now can actually use any PSR15 middleware and, and integrate it, for example, for timing your requests and things like that, you know. Um, and we also had quite some UI improvements, so with insert mode and uh, default backend modules. So, for example, you can configure NEOS now that when you log in, uh, you don't end up in the content uh, editing area, but in, in some other backend module, which you might even define, for example, for managing uh, users, right? And then we had, whoops, lots of clicks at once. <laughs> I forgot my clicker at home, so I had to borrow one. I'm s and actually, that felt so unreal. Um, driving here because I've not been on a business trip for more than a year and uh, of course not at a conference. So everything I usually have in my bag is now probably on the desk of my daughters for playing. <laughs> Let me click again. Yeah, okay, no picture here. Anyway, um, so, NEO 7.1 is so fresh that uh, the picture is not developed yet. Um, we had uh, PHP 8 support in NEO 7.1 uh, with some exceptions, so annotations are not fully implemented yet, uh, but they come in 7.2. And we s finally said farewell to Ember.js. Uh, Sebastian, remember <laughs> when you <laughs> integrated that? But it's a good, a, a nice goodbye. Ember.js suited us well, but it's also very nice that cleaning all that up, I mean, we're using React for some time now, but there was all this old code uh, sitting around, and uh, sometimes we need to address that technical depth as well, and this is now fully cleaned up. We also had the introdu introduction of Fusion Forms 2.0, which allows you to um, e more easily create forms uh, b with Fusion, of course. Right. And then we had other initiatives as well, not only development. Um, we had the Marketing Guild, uh, who met frequently online. We even had a marketing sprint in July, I think. Um, and they talked about, uh, they discussed about organic growth and, and provide some answer answers, make participation in the project easier. And um, actually even started an initiative to create a German version of the NEOS website, which makes sense because um, the, when you look at where NEOS is mostly used, uh, Germany plays an important role, of course. So that's also why Finally, after lots of years, um, they um, also looked at the German Wikipedia art article and, and made sure that uh, things there were actually correct, right? And apart from the guilds and the NEOS core team, uh, we also had some meetups um, happening. I think they were organized by Sebastian uh, Helsler and Daniel Lina together in like in Karlsruhe, but uh, they were online meetups. 
and that was was really nice. I I actually didn't make it to uh, any of the three meetups I think they had, but uh, my colleague Christian uh, told me that this was really nice, and I also heard some some feedback from the community. So this is really nice and creative to to um, you know find some way to deal with the situation, uh, even though you cannot meet in person. Yeah, then remember, I, I put up this photo uh, last year again already about the event sourced content repository. Um, and there was not so much progress probably as we hoped for, but also it was not realistic to hope for <laughs> what we hoped for for this year. Um, nevertheless, um, uh, there was a lot of work uh, being done by uh, Sebastian and by Bernard and um, also by Bastian. So it, it works now with event sourcing 2.0, you know, the event sourcing package we have. Um, also got a lot of um, love and improvements throughout the last year. And an important uh, feature also has been developed, uh, which is the event sourced based routing, because you know how routing uh, works in in NEAS uh, that is based on, on the nodes you have, the pages you have, and so on. And of course, we need to make it possible to have uh, event based routing as well. So event sourcing creates a protection and then routing information is taken from there. So that was a big important step as well. And then there are things you probably don't see at all, usually, and uh, they happen uh, behind the scenes in our infrastructure. So, of course, we have frequently, we have updates, uh, just, uh, for example, of, of our discussion platform that needs to be updated, but also the whole building infrastructure on GitHub. Um, we had some, some problems there with um, um, with quotas. So unfortunately, what we uh, previously could do with Travis, um, uh, building our, our uh, tests and so on, um, had some quota limits which were not, not enough for an open source project like ours, even after we bought some additional hours. So uh, we had to take the big step and completely re uh, implement our build pipeline uh, to GitHub Actions. So, and at this point, I'd just say, would like to thank Alexander Bell a lot, not only for this part, but also for his uh, huge efforts uh, in in working on Flow throughout the last year. It really, when you when you look at GitHub and who contributed, you really see how how Alex um, invested a lot of time there. Thanks for that. Right, uh, we'll hear about that a bit later, um, but also it's a good example. Sebastian thought like, you know, the Neo NEOS Media Browser, that's something which is still old-fashioned uh, developed. So we, we have the modern React UI, um, the content area, content module in, in NEOS, is, everything is based re on React, but the whole media part was still with traditional templating and and um, like mechanisms you wouldn't use anymore these days. So it's like ten years old almost. Um, so he took the initiative to to modernize that and also applied for funding and fortunately got some funding not only from the NEOS community but also from from single companies. So um, you'll see. Uh, a dedicated talk about that, uh, what progress you made there. And um, I think it's a good example of taking an initiative for something of NEOS you care for and then just go for it. And sometimes that can be just crazy ideas like creating a NEOS terminal, a terminal emulator for NEOS. Uh, how often uh, have you? been using NEOS and thinking like, wouldn't it be crazy if, and so and so. And then, I mean, even I had these ideas like, wouldn't it be good to have that and that, but if, if I don't act upon it, then it will never happen. So a uh, big 
kudos to Sebastian also to, to actually put that into practice. And if you think a terminal emula emulator is a crazy idea, um, oops, can you jump back? Right, then you uh, have to see what René Rehme did with his website. So he had the idea to um, actually have this his website as a role-playing game, um, I guess, because he wanted to learn how do you do, uh, do uh, role-playing games in a browser. And he chose uh, Neos as a backend for that. And uh, it's, there's, there's a nice video you really have to look um, to watch where he explains how uh, he, he configures this game with nodes and Neos and with Fusion and everything. So it's, it's a really creative use of uh, Neos. Um, really like that. Right. So, ah, yeah. And there's also a blog post about it. So if you look into the future, um, what what is uh, what are the plans for Neos? I mean, I have really I really have to say I n don't know it. Uh, I it's I even know less than uh, the previous years because it was so difficult to get in touch with the whole lot of people. I know what individual people are doing, but not what uh, everyone has planned as a whole in, in the NEOS team. What we found out though is our experience throughout the last year that the way um, of development has changed a lot. So things are more capsuled, we have better um, standalone solutions like the PSR standards and also the discussion of new features has changed a bit during the pandemic. So um, they these, these bigger changes usually don't require that much code changes, but require good discussions and, uh, for example, the project uh, protection-based routing was one of the examples where discussions also happened uh, on our platforms and then the concept being implemented was not so hard to do. So we see that um, the NEOS UI is still improving and I think they are also looking for uh, help there. So if you're um, uh, working with React and know about React, then maybe this, is, this would be something you could uh, step in. Um, but the big question, of course, is what's, what's your next feature? Or what features do you need in NEOS? Because it can happen that lots of people you know, are so busy with their projects and they are just happy. So we maybe just leave NEOS like it is. But if that's not the case, then make some suggestions. Even if you can't implement it yourself, uh, we need to know about that. And if we hear something very often, then we might start an initiative. And with we, I don't mean the NEOS Foundation or something like that, but the NEOS community. So if you're looking for these new features, look around, um, be creative, use NEOS in unusual ways and as always stay curious thank you very much robert that was an awesome keynote and from what i just heard i'm wondering did we really have a pandemic anyone i mean there was so much going on i thought when when we were here last year i thought Oh boy, if, if that pandemic continues, uh, then, you, you know, hopefully we can keep up the release schedule. And what you just showed us from the community is we didn't just do that. The people out there came up with even crazier ideas than you and I could have imagined. Uh, so awesome projects. Uh, it's such a privilege to be part of this open source community and as you just mentioned robert uh i think that's one of the principles really we try to try to you know uphold and in neos is it there, there isn't some one person saying what we should do next there is individuals 
who have an idea, who are inspired, who are curious, who want to learn something, like, like you said about yourself, thinking, huh, how, how does the React uh, universe work in, in the Neos backend? And then they go ahead, try something out, share it with the community, and in our Neos community, from my experience, you always get support. There's, there's you know, not a lot of ranting and, and you know, trolling and stuff like that. Um, so I can only reiterate on what you just said. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone who spent time and effort on NEOS and Flow and the whole community during these past 12 months since the last NEOS conference, uh, especially, and you already mentioned that, release managers, team members, community members who post their projects and share their ideas and, and the work they've done. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, without you, this all wouldn't be possible. I think what, what really pays off also is that we, we don't have that kind of centralistic approach because what what you what you see is that people drop out because of their life situation as well right so um, there are lots of uh, new families now with the newborn kids and so we see that they just drop out for some time right and uh, there are, there are people who might have a hard time you know like also for example my mother died beginning of this year, so the di the 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 months before were quite in intensive. And the good thing is that n the the whole project doesn't depend on a single person. You know, people stand in, and yeah, there's something I wanted to mention uh, still because it's so important. If you look at the PHP project, um, what do you think? You know working on the PHP core, the Zend engine. Um, how many people in the world are working on that and how many people could jump in? Well, I would imagine, I, I'm not I sure mean, about PHP the figures. Exactly, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking like half of the web is powered by PHP, right? I mean, all the big web projects, most of them, or very many of them, the CMSs, lots of them are powered by PHP. So I would imagine, I don't know, 10, 20 people maybe? It's one. 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 Are you serious? So uh, if, if you look at the just-in-time compiler, it's one person who knows it all. Oh, wow. And it's the second p person who tries to follow and, and could jump in a bit. But that's all, right? And that's, that's scary. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> for, for such an important uh, technology of the yeah. web. Um, so wh what's, what's your thoughts on that? What, what can, you know people watching this live stream, what can we do to, to help that situation? Yeah, I think what happens often is that uh, if you're working on something very complex, then you need to do it on your own, right? Because it's so complex that you barely can keep it in your head. Mm -hmm. um, but that's, at some point, it's a bit short-sighted. So you need to share that knowledge soon enough so that it doesn't become exclusive knowledge. So you need to pair more often and probably also meet in sprints and things like that. I think that helped us a lot to share knowledge about certain things so that we could meet in person. Um, so always look at these places. Is there some tiny component only one person knows about? Then try to address that and, and try to share it before it's too late, right? A, a good, a good point uh, to to get involved. And uh, so, what I'm thinking right now is a few things. Uh, for one, uh, companies who use those technologies to to earn their money, um, it's very, very helpful if they pass on a little bit. Uh, to open source projects and, and help them to, to have a financial base uh, from which they operate. That's probably one thing that really, really helps and, and um, may not be as visible because people may often think, you know, it's, it's open source software, it's free, right? Thank you very much. But there's always <laughs> a team, hopefully, and maybe only one person uh, actually doing the work. So... Um, if if you see something like that in the, in the Neos you know universe, then like like Robert, like you just said, get in get in touch and ask someone. Hey, what what are you doing there? Is that something that that I could get involved with? And the answer will probably very often be yes, of course. Um, 
And I remember a really good example of that was probably when we started the event source content repository journey, really, which kicked off with a big workshop where there were lots of people there to find out what, what are we going to do. And then it condensed to a few people, but at least a few, more than one, um, who are currently uh, working, working on that project and, and hopefully know what's going on and share that information.